All right, applications of normal distribution. Uh, basically what this comes down to is, and, and if they don't give you a normal distribution, we're just going to sketch one out. We put in the numbers, we shade, we then use that as the input to normal CDF or inverse norm. We get the answer, do with it what we may, and answer the question. So men's finishing time for 10K race were normally distributed with a mean of 41.3 and a standard deviation of 3.2. Johnny ran the race, blah, Mark, blah. If 3,000 men ran the race and determined the number of men who finished with the time between Johnny and Mark. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I like to list the mean and the standard deviation. So this is the men's race. So mu is 41.3. And sigma is 3.2. Okay, Johnny's time was 39.2. It's going to be below the mean. I don't care exactly where it is. It's just below the mean, 39.2. Mark ran the race at 43.1. It's above the mean. Again, I don't really care. I'm just using this to shade this in. So now I say, I want to know what percent of people finished between them. The calculation that gives me that is normal CDF. So now I have, oh, 39.2, and what was the other guy's time? 43.1. So up here, I have all the numbers I need for normal CDF. So we go normal CDF, okay, and you're going to show this. This is the work you show. It's going to say determine. Well, determine means show your work. So if we don't give you a little, you know, distribution, Sketch one out, label it, here's mu, here's sigma, here's low, here's high, here's the shading, and I'm using normal CDF from a low of 39.2 to a high of 43.1 with a mean of 41.3 and a standard deviation of 3.2. So bring up our calculator, let's go over here, or not. I want you to move. Okay, there's our calculator. So we go. Uh, second function, VARS, which is the distribution. Number two is normal CDF. My low bound, 39.2. My high bound, 43.1. My mean, 41.3. My standard deviation, 3.2. Um, if your calculator does not show this in the display, if it just has the word normal CDF, you will go 39.2, comma, which is above the 7, 43.1, comma, 41.3, comma, 3.2. Close the bracket or not, it doesn't really matter. So yours is going to look like this. Normal CDF, and you'll see that. 39 points, so it's low, high, mu, mean, standard deviation, right? Mu, sigma. Then we hit enter. That gives us probability, which is 0 0.5. Oh, wait, I, I must have rounding. Hang on. So mode, yeah, I'm sorry. Float. Quit. It's like, it can't be 0 0.5, right? Like, pretty much, so... Uh, second enter, I'm just going to re-enter this. Okay, 0.457280 right? That's what normal CDF gives me. But there are 3,000 men, so we're going to take the output from normal CDF, so that's equal to 0 0.457 dot 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 times 3,000. Okay, so go back here. So all I'm going to do is just go times 3,000. Now, the ANS means it's pulling the number down, right? The last number that was in the calculator. Multiply it by 3,000 because it's that percentage, right? Well, this is really a decimal, right? It's 45.728 blah, blah, blah percent. But we want it as a decimal. It's 0.45, you know, almost half of them. So it's going to be close to 1,500. And it's 1,371.84. So times that. And we'll round that to the nearest whole human being. So we'll say that's 1,372. Okay, so it's people, we round to the nearest person. 
So we would expect about three thousand uh, thirteen hundred and seventy-two people to have finished between Johnny's time and Mark's time. Any questions? Next one. Less than Johnny's time. Now, each of these, I mean, there's like six of these, right? But let's just pretend each one is a separate question. Like on a task, you wouldn't get like six of these, maybe just one. So we go back, we do the same thing. So mu is equal to, my mean is, the mean for the distribution is 41.3, and the standard deviation is 3.2, right? So I want to get in the habit of every time I do one of these, this is how I do it. Not in the habit of, oh, there's six of them, and it's all this, no. Every time you do it, it's a different question. Pretend it's on its own, right? Because if you, you know, you're going to play the way you practice. So if you practice this way, you just, okay, write out the mean and write out the standard deviation. Why? Because I need them. They're inputs to normal CDF, right? Your other choice is convert everything to Z scores and then use normal CDF, which is low Z, high Z, right? That's ridiculous. Why would you want to do all that work? Okay, less than Johnny's time. Where's Johnny? Johnny's at 39.2. Now, all I care is that the 39.2 be to the left, right? It's lower. That's all that matters. Less than Johnny's time is guys that are out here, which means they're, it's, it's a race, so they're better than Johnny if they have a lower time. I know. Okay. You just got to wrap your head around it on the, if it's on the test, or if you did better than Johnny is over here. Um, so then... Okay. And remember, it's always going to say determine, uh, you know, unless it's multiple choice. If it's multiple choice, I would still do this work, right? You can't do it. I'm amazed all the time. I get a test, I got a test from somebody who wrote th an earlier 30-2 test that they missed. And you get it back, and there's like nothing on the page, right? For multiple choice and numeric, it's blank. And it's like, there's no way. You can't do this without doing something, right? And it's like, just show what you're doing. This is for you. It's not for me. I don't care. I mean, you know, the answer is the answer. But it's for you. You get it back and you look at it and it's wrong and, and it's blank. You have no idea. What did you do? I don't know. We'll get the wrong answer again. I can't. Every time I try this now, I get the right answer. So if you don't know what mistake you made, how do you correct your mistakes? It's feedback. Think of every test as feedback. Right? It all leads up to the final exam, be it the 20-2 final exam or next year leads up to a diploma exam. So if you're looking over a past test studying for a diploma exam and you got something wrong, you want to know why? What, what did I do wrong? I don't know. You didn't leave any breadcrumbs behind, right? There's nothing on the paper. There's no clue. It's not a written one. If it's written, we can at least look through it and say, oh, see this, you didn't write Y equals. Cost you half harm. Anyways, normal CDF. Okay, what's our low boundary? Negative 1 E99, right? Up to 39.2 with a mean of 41.3 and a standard deviation of 3.2. So it's important this stuff gets entered in that order. Okay? And again, if you've got a newer calculator, it's harder to mess up because you're going to go second distribution. Seems like clear out the garbage. Okay, number two, you will never use normal PDF, so don't worry about number one, right? Just go number two, normal CDF. So now, um, the last number I had in there is in there, right? So I got to go negative one, E99, so that's second function, uh, uh, comma, which is above the seven. Up to 39.2, with the mean, of, okay, now these I can leave, so I'm lucky. Right. For you guys, with the other calculators, you can just go second enter until it comes up with normal CDF. And But the problem is when you're ending the negative 1E99, you're going to have to go second function delete to insert so that you can insert more numbers. Because you only had three numbers there. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's like five characters, and you had four characters. So you have to re-enter. Okay, so we just hit enter. Because those are the same. And... Get that normal CDF. Bless you. Hit enter. 0 0.2558, etc. So equals 0 0.2588. Dot dot dot. Just show the three dots, right? It's math, not science. We don't round until the final answer. Okay? But there's 3,000 men, right? I want to know how many of them. So we just go times, right? That just brings down the last number, ANS, last number, times 3,000. Three, one, two, three. Hit enter. 
776.49, or sorry, 767.49. So here's the thing. We're going to take that to where? 767 or 768? We're going to go to 68, right? It's not quite like normal rounding. This would round to 767. But we're going to say, you know what? I've got more than 767. Even if I had 767.2, I'd say, well, there's more than 768. Uh, seven minutes, we'll call it 768. Okay, so equals, oh, sorry, then we go times 3,000 equals, so you know what, that shouldn't be an equal sign, that should be a leads to, right, normal CDF gives me this number, which I then multiply by 3,000, getting, what do we say, 768. Question. So do you use, like, that type of value just based on what the question is asking you? Yeah, it's people, so we... We, we just say more than 767 people, we're going to call it 768. It's the, it's the design type, right? So uh, you want to paint your room. You measure your room, and there's 500 square feet of wall space. Yeah. And you go to Home Depot, and you click up a can. It says, covers 400 square feet. So how many cans do you need? You need two. Right? Even though if you were rounding, you'd say, well, rounded to the nearest 400, I just need one. Like if I could buy a quarter of a can, I need one. I need one point two five cans. So rounding, that's one can. Yeah, but <laughs> what what part? Are, you know, what part behind my dresser? Right, the part behind the bookcase. Nobody will notice. It's like I've got an outside wall of my house. There's a shed again. There's no paint behind that shed. There's no way that shed moves. So you know, it's kind of like I reached in with the brush as best I could. But you know, if somebody eventually moves the shed, then it's like yeah, there's this unpainted uh, walk. Of more than Johnny's time. More than Johnny's time. So, okay. We're using kind of the same numbers, right? So, we're going to start off by listing mu and sigma. Leave some room below it, right, on the diagram so you can put the number you're going to use. Yep. If this was like a question like this, would you be able to use for, because it says at first less than Johnny's time, then more? Would yep. you be able to do 3,000 minus 700 or the number you got? And then, uh, yeah, and if one you followed know. on the other, then yeah, you could go 3,000 minus 768, right? So let's give this a try and see. So we should end up with what's 3,000 minus 768? 2232.5. So 2232, so 2233, right? Yeah. So the problem is we're going to, because we're going to round that to the nearest person, we're going to have one more person than 3,000 if you add the two together, which is why we're just going to do it separately, right? So Johnny's time was 39.2, so we put 39.2. Now, all it needs to be is in about the right position relative to the mean. Okay, it's below the mean. You don't need to worry about, well, standard deviation 3.2. You know, I gotta get it exact. It's just, look, it's below the mean. And more than Johnny's time, I'm shading here. So my input to normal CDF is, normal CDF, what's my low? 39.2, what's the high? 199, what's the mean? And the standard deviation? There you go. Right? So if you do enough of these, it'll still be in your head next week when you're doing the test. Right? It's gotta, we know it now, but we need to know it then. Okay, so sec, no, let's clear this. So second distribution, number two, normal CDF. So 39.2, 1.2. E, 99, 41.3 and 3.2, so luckily, you know, I'm still using that same distribution. It's going to, uh, in this case, carry forward. Paste, enter, 0 0.7441, blah, 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 so 0 0.7441, blah, 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 times 3,000. Okay, so go to here, say times 3,000. Enter. 2232.5. So we're going to call that 2233. Uh, 2233. Now, if we add that to the 768 from above, we're going to end up with 3,001 men when there were only 3,000, right? So we know what we're doing is just rounding it up to the nearest whole person. So in this case, we're sort of taking into account an extra person. Uh, Mark ran the race in 43.1. So here's Mark, 43.1. The mean is 41.3. 
Standard deviation is 3.2. Less than Mark's time is below. All right, so give this one a shot. You do the rest. We've done three like this. So you go. I'll give you a head start. I'll go. From. Let's meet at normal CDM. Then I'll show you how to do it using uh, the older calculator. Fair start. So you slide this over. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go second function enter, second function enter. So that's the normal. So if you're using the older calculator, this is what you could do. Hit second function enter twice. All right. So now we come to this line and we say, well, I got to edit this, right? So I'm going to arrow back to the beginning and say, okay, I want negative one, second E, 99, comma, and now we need 43.1. Now notice I only have three places here, right? So I go four, three, point, and I don't want to overwrite that comma, so you go second function, delete, insert, your cursor changes to a blinking cursor, and you can put the one in there. Okay, so now I've edited this. I don't have to re-enter the whole thing. I've edited it just to change these numbers. Hit enter, zero point, so I'm not going to say equals, say leads to 0 0.7131, 0 0.7131, times 3,000. Yes. We're going to go back here, go times 3,000, enter, and get 2139.337, so what are we going to call that? 2139. 2139.337, so we're going to call that? Two one, oh, 2140. 2140, right? We're going to round up to the nearest whole person. No matter what it is. Like, no say, matter what it is, point zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. Yes, go up. Uh, yep. It's more than. Okay. It generally, it's not going to be like point zero zero one. It's going to be like point one. But yeah, if it's more than, round it up, right? Okay. What that means is, in reality, so look at B and C. In reality, seven hundred sixty-seven or seven hundred sixty-eight men finished uh, whatever below Johnny's time, and two two three three or two two three two finished above. Right? Like it will add to three. That actually, it should add to uh, 2,999, right? Because Johnny's in there. So more than his time, those two numbers really should add to 2,299. No, so what I said is that 768 is really 767 or 768. When we're talking 3,000 men and we're... We're not talking as a percentage of error, right? I'm off by one. That's one out of 3,000 times 100. Okay, so you could work out the percent error and say, so if I want a percent error, I'd say, well, it's one divided by 3,000 times 100. So it's a percent, point zero three percent error, right? So that, that's nothing, right? We're not talking, there's not a huge error. What are you off by? Well, I could be off by point zero three percent. It's acceptable. All right, two more. More than Mark's time and less than 48 minutes. Give them both a shot. More than Mark's time. I'm going to have to look on the sheet to put this out. Okay. <coughs> now, you can use Brett's thing. <coughs> Right, which is if it's less than is twenty one forty, then we'll just go three thousand minus twenty one forty and get eight hundred and sixty. Okay, but if it's its own question, so let's just pretend this is its own question. So we've got to do the whole, the whole meal deal, right? So mu is forty one point three, sigma is three point two. Because on a test, each one of these is just going to be eight. It's not going to unless it says use the following information to answer the next three questions. It gives you the one scenario. 
it's just good practice. Uh, so we got mu and sigma, we got Mark's time, which is 43.1. 43.1, we got a shade here. So normal CDF, right? So the diagram is there for you to put your, your information and shading on, which just lets you know, okay, so I want 43.1 for my low, 1E99 for my high, 41.3, 3.2, okay, calculator, so. Let me use second enter. I'll just do it again the way that, uh, so there's normal CDF. So I'll go over here. So 43.1 comma uh, 1E99. Uh, 99 comma, and I got another comma here. So I'm just going to delete one of those. Right. So that's the way you can do it. You can just bring the number back in. And you either, if, if it's using a negative 1E9, you just go second function insert to insert another character, or you delete one of them. Hit enter. We got 0.28688, etc. So 0 0.2868 times 3,000 times 3,123. Is eight hundred and sixty point six six, so eight hundred and sixty one. Okay, so again, because we've rounded up, we're always going to have. If we take a look at these two, twenty one forty and eight sixty one, it's always going to add to three thousand and one, right? Always, because we rounded them both up, so we're going to get one extra person. Uh, less than forty eight minutes. So four. Okay, so mu forty one point three, sigma is three point two. 48 minutes are actually going to be somewhere out here. 48. Less than 48. That's what we're shading, right? So we always want a distribution. We always want to label it, shade it. And then we use that for the input to normal CDF. Negative 1, E99, up to 48, with a mean of 41.3. And the standard deviation is 3.2. Okay. So again, if you're doing each of these, you have six practice rounds of entering this into your calculator. By the time we're done this worksheet, you'll have 13 practice rounds, which means when you sit down and do it on the test, you're going to remember that it goes low, high, and mu, sigma. Right? Unless you've got the calculator that cues you, then you have to remember that. But. Um, so this is equal to, well, at least to 0 0.9818 times 3,000, which is 2,946. Okay, so all but 54 of the finishers will finish in less than 48 minutes. All right, any questions on page one? We're almost, almost about halfway through, right? There's 13 examples, just six of these were using the same scenario. Okay, in general, if a data set is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, then the normal CDF calculates the area under the curve between a lower bound and upper bound by, okay, second function distribution, normal CDF, lower bound, upper bound, mu and sigma. But what's weird, I guess, is that when you do one bar stats, it lists the mean as x bar, but when you do this stuff, it's using a mu for the mean. Are you doing that? Why not, you know, x bar for both the mu. Resulting numbers between 0 and 1. So on a normal distribution, the tails never actually touch. Okay? There's always something out there, except you know, the test score, there's nothing out there, from 0 to 100. But, you know, the way the distribution works is there's always something out there. Okay? Uh, if there's no lower bound, use negative 1E99. If there's no upper bound, well, it's not, there's no lower bound. The lower bound is, you know, all the way to the left is negative 1E99. Uh, supermarket has determined that the average wait time at an express counter is 200 seconds with a standard deviation of 40. Assuming a normal distribution, determine the percent of customers that will wait longer than three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Everything else is in seconds. So what are we going to do at three minutes? Convert it. Okay, so this will be 3 times 60 is 180. So all the units have to be the same, right? Okay, so x-axis units, the units along the bottom, they're all in the same, right? So the mean is measured in seconds. The standard deviation is measured in seconds. 
any of the times we're working with will be measured in seconds. Okay, sketch out a normal curve, right? Just do this. And this. Label your mu. 200. 200. What's your sigma? 40. Okay, what's in the middle? 200, right? So where's 180? It's over to the left. So there's 180. Longer than three minutes. Okay, shade left or shade right? Shade right, see? Greater times are to the right. All right, so in order to percent of customers, right? So we're going to take normal CDF. Yes, we can take it, we can't spell it. Normal CDF from a low of 180, what's my high? E 199. with a mean of 200, standard deviation of 40, right? We're going to multiply that by 100. Okay, which will convert it to a percent. Remember, area is always given as a decimal between 0 and 1. Okay, clear. Ah, it just turned off. How did, okay, clear. Uh, okay, sec function distribution number 2. Yeah, what do we have? 180. 1E99 is already there. Got a different mean, 200. And standard deviation, 40. Paste. Okay, so if you don't have the calculator that does that, this is what yours looks like. Normal CDF, open parenthesis, 180, comma 199, etc., etc. And we're going to go times 100, right? Times 100. Might as well get the percent right off the bat. Hit enter. 69.14. Um, Yeah, so I like percents to two decimal places, whatever it says, so 69.15%. Okay, so a little over two-thirds of the customers will wait longer than three minutes. All right, so this might be important information for you. You know, do we open up another express counter? Do we do something else? Right, how long will people wait? That's okay, they got smartphones, they can... Go read their email or go on Twitter or something. Send out news for you. Look at the lines. Is it going to cost one Saturday? Look at the lines. It's like, it's like, why did I come here? First of all, you can't even find a place to park. That's clue number one. It's like, turn away and drive, drive away. Come back another day. How badly do you need? Length of time a certain car engine will run without major repairs is 110,000 kilometers with a standard deviation of 12,000 kilometers. Assuming the run times of 3,200 car engines following normal distribution determine the number of car engines that will not require major repairs if the engine is run longer than 120,000. Okay. So, what do we got? Length of time is 110,000. So, this is our mu. Right? That's the mean. 110,000 kilometers. Longer than 120. All right. Sketch out a distribution. Doesn't have to be pretty. Mu is 110,000. Sigma is 12,000. Those are x-axis units, so this is the x-axis that's in kilometers. Uh, longer than 120, so 120 is over here. Longer than 120. Left, right, up, down. Which way do we right. shoot? To the right. So just think, that's 110, that's 120, longer than 120 is out here. It wants to know how many cars, so yeah, we're going to get smart now with the way we do stuff. So we're going to say, okay, I'm going to take normal CDF from a low of 120,000 to a high of 1E99 with a mean of 110,000. Standard deviation of 12,000. So I'm going to multiply that by 3,200. Okay, why not? Right? You can just write it down in one, one line. right? And then you're showing your work. right? It's determine means show your work. So what have we done? We drew a little sketch. We labeled it. Here's my mu. Here's my sigma. This is the number. I'm shading this way. That leads me to this, right? Because I want to know, where did your normal CDF come from? It comes from here, right? 120,000 Why are you multiplying by 3,200? Well, there's 3,200 engines, right? We have to determine the number of, right? 
It doesn't ask you for the percent. It doesn't ask you for the probability, which is what that is. It's the number. Okay, so go in here. Slide this over. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so we'll do it old school way. So you entered normal CDF, right? Real tax figure 120, 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, second E, 99, oh, only got 9 there, 99, comma, 110, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, comma, 12, 0, 0, 0, close bracket, times 3200. Six hundred forty-seven point four five. So we're going to say how many? Six hundred forty-eight. Six hundred forty-eight. So of the thirty-two hundred engines, six hundred forty-eight of them should not require a major repair. Based on this information, you got to try and figure out where your <laughs> where your engine fits in. Should I not do the major repair? No, don't hold off. Well, do your do your regular maintenance. So I just had the timing belt on my car change, right? Because it's reached the time when you should. And the problem with the timing, if the timing belt goes, you just get a new engine, right? Because it will destroy your engine. So you don't want that particular piece to fail. You want to make sure that okay, yeah, I'll replace it when I'm supposed to. Between ninety-five thousand and one hundred and fifteen thousand. All right. Pretend each one of these, totally separate question, I'm going to do them from scratch. Sketch a little normal distribution. Label your mu. Your sigma. Uh, there's your mean, that's the 110. I want between 95. I'm going to write 95k and 115k. And I want between. So that leads me, right? Everything leads somewhere. That leads me to my normal CDF, right? So now we can write in normal CDF. My low, my low is 95. Don't try and put in a K. That won't work. Okay. And I have this pre-calculated, so... Oh, oh, we're going to go times 3,200, right? Times 3,200. Just get there in one, uh, one fell swoop. And then rounding up, right? So, should have got 1,779. 1,779 cars um, of the 3,200 will not require major repairs between 95 and 150. So any questions on this question? Okay, give you a chance to copy it down. So we'll do that in seven, eight, nine. Okay, four more. And these four are just they're totally separate questions, right? One of them might even be exciting. Manufacturers determine the life of their mixers is normally distributed with a mean of 10 years and a standard deviation of three years. If they guarantee their mixers for seven years, what percent can they expect to replace? Okay, same deal, right? Sketch out a normal distribution. Uh, mean of 10 years, mu is equal to 10. Sigma is equal to 3. Okay, remember, things have to be in the same unit. So if they gave months anywhere, we would have to convert months into years or convert all the years to months. doesn't matter which. It wouldn't affect the percent. It's just everything's got to be in the same unit. Uh, guarantee their mixers for 7 years. So, okay, so there's my 10. Here's my 7. So what do I have to replace? To the left of 7 or to the right of 7?
So left of seven will be what? Below seven or above? Below. So if a mixer lasts below seven years, do I have to replace it? Or fix it? Well, I guaranteed it for seven years. So it's to the left we have to replace it, right? Or repair it. If it lasts more than seven years, it was only guaranteed for seven, right? So more than seven, we're not interested, right? At what percent? I'm going to have to replace or repair anything that lasts below seven years, okay? Yeah, so... That's one of the biggest reasons to do this is so you can sit there and look at it and say, it's a damn time. Yeah. It's a race. Wait, what's better? You know? So, you know, it's okay. There's a few you might have to think about, right? But in this case, so just this is below seven years. Would I replace something that I guaranteed for seven years if it lasts? Yes, I would, right? If it lasts less than seven, I have to replace it. More than seven, it's like, sorry, we only guaranteed it for seven years. So we want to know how many will we replace? Uh, what percent? Okay, so percent, we need normal CDF, we're going to multiply it by 100, right? Remember, normal CDF is a decimal. So normal CDF, negative 1E99, right? Because we tail off to the left, so we're going all the way to the left, up to 7, with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. Okay? On, uh, let's clear that. Second distribution number two. Uh, so no, so negative one e ninety nine uh, up to seven mean of ten standard deviation of three case and oh times one hundred uh, fifteen point eight seven percent. That's a percent. Okay, so you got to go times one hundred. Yeah, what percent? Okay. So the desk, I mean, if it was 0.1587, I was like, eh, that's a really low percent. Like, my graph shouldn't look like that. I shouldn't be shading that much if it's that small of a number. So, right? It's like messing up the sine law. You're trying to do the sine of an angle. And, you know, you're trying to figure out the angle, and you do, you know, sine A is 0.17. Is, it can't be 0.17 degrees. So then usually people just multiply it by 100. It must be 17 degrees. <laughs> No, no, it's you gotta do the inverse sign. Okay. So here it's yeah, you gotta multiply by um, one hundred. Okay, makes sense? That's what they're gonna replace or have to repair. Um, and look, any manufacturer of anything in setting a warranty has you know, I mean they're driven by a number of considerations. How long their product's gonna last versus what are, what many what are other manufacturers offering as a warranty? Where are we in the marketplace? Are we a premium brand? If we're a premium brand, we're going to want a laundry guarantee, right? It's like we stand behind our, you know, our thing. You can use it, and, and it'll be fine. Uh, if it's a lower end, low cost brand, you're not going to have much of a warranty. It's like, look, you paid twenty bucks for the blender. What do you expect? Okay. Now, versus you paid eight hundred dollars for this blender. What do you expect? I expect something with like a seven year warranty, right? As opposed to, yeah, you know, we give this a one year warranty. Now, anyways, car manufacturer has determined that the engines in the Python car have a mean life of 80,000 kilometers with a standard deviation of 10. For how many kilometers should they guarantee the engine if they do not want to replace more than 2% of them? Okay, this is not normal CDF, right? Because normal CDF gives us a percent. Well, sorry, it gives us a decimal, which we multiply by 100 to get a percent. So, still, we're going to sketch. The mean is 80,000. Standard deviation is 10,000. We don't want to replace more than 2%. So we are willing to replace 2%, right? The ones that don't last that long, that's where they're going to be. Okay. This is the mean here, that's 80,000. We want to know, what's that? What raw score, not the Z score, right? What raw score, that's okay, because inverse norm is just like normal CDF, only inverse norm takes the percent to the left, which in this case is what we're interested in, the percent to the left, give it the mean and the standard deviation, right? If, if all you do is give it the percent to the left, 0 0.02, it'll kick back a Z score. 
If you want to work out the raw score, right, you got z equals x minus mu over sigma, which, by the way, you have to know, and you're going to, there's going to be a number of questions on the test that involve z equals x minus mu over sigma, where we give you three out of the four things you've got to calculate the four. You should expect three or four questions on that, right? So one where we just, we give you these three, and another question will give you these three, and another question will give you these three, another question will give you these three. Each one, you're just calculating a different thing. Okay, how does this work? We do inverse norm. Inverse norm takes the percent to the left, but guess what? It's not a percent, it's a decimal. So you can enter 0 0.02 or you can go 2 divided by 100. Either one, it's going to work, right? So it's like, I don't want to convert it to a, you know, a decimal, then let the calculator do it. And then you give it mu and sigma. All right, so what it does, it's going to calculate the z-score, and then it's going to use your mean and standard deviation, which you've given it three out of the four things. You gave it um, mu and sigma, and you gave it the z, uh, sorry, the percent. It calculates the z-score, uses your mu and sigma, and it gets your x-value, which is what we want. Okay, let's go in here. here let's clear this up. We go second distribution. This is number three, area. So you know what, I'm lazy, I'm going to go 2 divided by 100. Mean, this is for a standard normal, right? But we have an actual mu, 80,000 and sigma, 10,000, pace, 2 divided by 100, comma, 80,000. Make sure these are right, because you accidentally put in 8,000, weird stuff is going to happen. Okay. Like, if you're lucky, it just gives you an error. Okay, 59,462.5, so 59,463, that's how many kilometers, right? So basically, if you guaranteed it for 60,000 kilometers, that's rounding the nearest thousand, or nearest 10,000, if you guaranteed it for 60,000 kilometers, you're going to replace a little, if you went to 60,000 K, because nobody's going to say, and you have a 59,462.5 kilometer warranty. And what? Yeah. You know, so you say 60,000 kilometer warranty. You're going to end up replacing a little more than 2%. We could work that out. Right? But we're going to say uh, 50, yeah, 59,462. So that's what this is. 59,462.5 kilometers. Okay. Is everybody good with that? That's the number we got? Any questions? So, what if you did 60,000, right? This is the now what if. If we did 60,000, so this is 59,462.5. So if we did 60,000, let's put that here, 60,000. Then I want to know, I'm going to use normal CDF, right? What's negative 1e to 99 up to 60,000 with a mean of this and a standard deviation of that? So, yeah, so this is, this is the extension question, right? It's the, you're not going to tell them at 59,462, right? What if we went to 60k? So this is the decision in the boardroom, right? What if we go to 60k? Well, then we say, okay, it's going to be normal CDF, negative 1e 99, yeah, up to 60,000 with a mean of 80,000 and a standard deviation of 10,000, okay, times 100. All right, we're going to replace 2.275%, right? be 2.3%. And they have to decide. Uh, is that what we want to do? What if we go to 59,000 kilometers? Yeah, that's a weird number, but, okay, so we go second distribute uh, normal CDF. So what if we went to 59,000? 59, 59, one, two, three. Uh, enter, 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 paste. Times 100. This one. Yeah, so 1.8%, right? So if, if we use 60K, 60,000, then it'll be 2.2%. 59,000, 1.8%. So that's a decision that they have to make, right? What percent? What's it going to cost? This is all built into the cost of your car. 
right? Any warranty manufacturers offer you, that's built into the cost of the car. They know that a certain number of them are going to fail, certain components, and, you know, it, it's not that they build it that way, it's just the, the components that are manufactured have, each have their own little normal distribution as to failure, right? Some things will last a really long time and some things will last less, even though they came off the same manufacturing line. And we try and keep that tight. What do we want? We want a really low standard deviation. Okay? So if you're manufacturing, I don't know who does skateboarding for that. What are the best variants? ABEC 9s or something like that? Or maybe a couple of them. <laughs> so so if, you, if you buy a pair of uh, anything that runs on wheels, skateboard, whatever, they have bearings in them, right? Bearings just run. And, and the quality of the bearing determines how long it lasts. So they have different ratings for bearing. And the better the rating, the closer to the exact tolerance, the closer to the exact size those bearings are. That's more expensive because you have to manufacture high quality bearings. You have to measure each one of them as they come off to say, okay, we're only using the top ones for this, right? We call them ABAC 9 or whatever. If it's ABAC 5, we can have a little more tolerance, right? Yeah, it's not going to spin as long, but you're not going to pay as much, right? And then they just say, we're not going to manufacture to as tight a tolerance. We have a little bit, right? We can move stuff out a little bit. Um, those are all considerations that go into things. Okay, so in this case, this is their consideration. It's 59,462. We're not going to put that in, or, you know, so what if it's 60,000, what if it's 59? Lawnmower company knows the average life of lower mowers is 9.3 years and the standard deviation is 2.2. The company does not want to replace more than six out of the 200 lawnmowers it expects to sell. What guarantee to the nearest tenth of a year? Okay, so years, 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 okay, cool. Um, should the company provide in order to satisfy its replacement policy? All right, every single normal CDF inverse norm question ever requires us to sketch this out, right? Uh, so, what do we got? Mu is 9.3 and sigma is 2.2. So there's 9.3. We, we, we don't want to replace more than 6 out of the 200. What's 6 out of 200? You know what? You can just write it as 6 out of 200. It's 3%. Right? I mean, we can do that. Six, 6 over 200 reduces to 3 over 100. Anything over 100 is called a percent, so it's 3%. Okay, so 3%. We don't have to enter that, right? We can just go inverse norm, 6 divided by 200. Well, I'm not doing the math. I'm doing a you know, calculator to do it. So you can write inverse norm, 6 divided by 200, comma, 9.3 comma 2.2. Without the 9.3 and the 2.2, inverse norm will kick back a Z score. You do not want to have to sit down with the formula because you already used it four times earlier in the test. You don't need to sit down with the formula. You can just say, hey, I'll give you the mean standard deviation. I'll make you do I'll give you the mean standard deviation. You give me back the actual number to the nearest tenth of a year. And Having done this six years ago, I have the answer. It was only three years ago. Having done this, I have the answer. 5.16. So to the nearest tenth of a year, now you don't want to replace more than 6 out of 200, so which way do we take 5.16? You want to round to the nearest tenth. We go to 5.1 or 5.2? Big decision. This is the difference between... Okay, we don't replace more than. So here, right here, this is the deal. You're looking at this. This is 5.16. If I go to 5.2, will this area get larger? So which way do I go? 5.1. So we go to 5.1 years. Now, we could actually figure it out, right? Because what we could do is do a normal CDF with negative 1e99 to 5.1 years and then to 5.2 years and just say what percentage would we get. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I didn't do it in the past, so I'm not doing it. But that's an extension question, right? That question that gets asked. That's what gets asked when you're just when they're sitting around in the engineering meetings doing this and they say, all right, we got 5.16. What if we go to 5.2 years, right? Which is a weird number, 0.2 years, right? What's 0.2 years? 
that's 0 0.2 years, how many months is that? 0 0.2 times 12, 2.4 months. Okay, so they could say we offer a 62 month warranty, right? Five years is 60 months. More than likely, they're just gonna go with five year warranty, right? And then replace even fewer of them. All right, this is the last one. Heights of a soldier in a Canadian Army regiment are normally distributed with a mean of 173 centimeters and a standard deviation of 12. The tallest 33% of the soldiers in the regiment are eligible to drive a specially designed subterranean vehicle. That's weird. Usually they fit smaller people. So, so if you want to be a pilot, you can't be too tall. You will not fit in the cockpit of a plane. You know, if you want to be a pilot of a fighter jet, there's an upper limit on height. You just can't squeeze in there. Um, and then, but there's also a lower limit. It's like if you're sitting in there, you have to be able to reach the, uh, the pedal, right? For the, actually, I don't even think they use those anymore. It's just a joystick. So. But you got to be able to be seated. Uh, what's the minimum height required to drive the specially designed vehicle for tall soldiers? Okay. We draw the usual, right? Mean, 173. Sigma, 12. Okay, the tallest 33% of the soldiers, I need to put a line and shade left or right. So do I put the line below the mean or above the mean? And when, so let's do that first. Does the line go above or below the mean? Tall soldiers, 33%, right? Remember, the mean says 50% are here, 50% are here. I want to shade for the tallest 33%. So does the line go below or above? Above. Do I shade below or above? Above. What's this area here? 33%, right? 0 0.33. What does inverse norm take? Area to the left or to the right? Area to the left. I'm lazy. Here's what we're going to do. I want inverse norm. What am I going to put in here? And remember, I'm lazy, so I'm not doing any calculation. Calculation should be calculation. So I don't want 0.33, right? Because I want the area to the left. What's the area to the left? What's the whole area? One minus zero. One. Yeah, so one minus point. I'm lazy, right? I'm not going to do this calculation. One minus 0 0.33, comma. Right? Because inverse norm is picky. Inverse norm wants the red area. What's the red area? Okay, we know. 0.67, right? But I don't want to calculate it. So I'm just going to say, look, I know the whole area is 1. I know the area I don't want is 0.33. So the area I do want is 1 minus 0.33. Now you could do that calculation yourself, get 0.67 and then put 0.67 in, or you can just be lazy. And the mean, 173, standard deviation of 12. Okay, so turn this on. Here, second distribution, inverse norm, 1 minus 0 0.33. Mean, 173, standard deviation of 12. Paste it in, what are we doing with it? Oh, this will just give us back the raw, 178.27. Okay, so call it 178.3, 178.3 centimeters. We could likely get away with 178, 0 0.3 centimeters, 3 millimeters, not going to make a huge difference. Okay. So I think, yeah, we're going to say 178.3, I'd say yeah, if they were 178, they could probably drive it. If they're 177 and knew somebody, they could probably drive. Is that like realistic? No. It's totally realistic. I don't know. It could possibly. Okay. I do know there is a limit on how tall a person could be to be a fighter pilot because there is only so much space in the cockpit of a fighter jet. So you can't be you can't be too short because you know, and you can't be too short. There will be some adjustment on the seat, right? It'll adjust. It's like you're driver's seat in your car and you know it'll adjust but you know there, there's an optimal seating position and arm length right to reach the joystick and all of that so if somebody's too tall you know your head can't be bumping up against the canopy at the same point you got to be able to see over something so there's a certain range of heights 
think we'll, we're gonna, as soon, as soon as I stop the video, we'll Google it and see just, you know, what, how, like, what, what's the height range of a CF-18 pilot? Because right, CF-18s are what we, uh, okay, questions?